Hi, I'm Sides. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to show you how I set up a Logic project using a reference track so I can make a song and reference the song as quick as possible, but also create my own new thing, my own new creation. So the first thing I will do is buy the song. This is a little controversial, but if I'm gonna, if I like a song to use it as a reference track, I'm just gonna pay for it so I can drag it into my project. The other thing I like to do beforehand is quite literally just Google what the BPM is. Usually these songs are very popular and somebody somewhere has already figured out the key in the BPM. I will type in the name of the song, which is three. I say, what is the key? There it is. What is the BPM? And here, it just says it here. <laughs> and then the key is that. C sharp major. We'll go with C sharp major, 127 BPM. So I like to set that up first. So I'm going to do 127 and then C sharp the key doesn't matter that much, but I just like to have that there. Okay, now I'm going to find the song that I purchased. Here it is. And I'm just going to drag it into my project. Okay, cool. And now what I'm going to do, I always like to have markers already set up in my template in measures with four bars within the markers. I'm just going to go through and listen, and I'm going to write out the whole arrangement with the markers. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to speed this up for you so you guys can don't have to watch me do it. So, um, yeah, so you can just see in sped up motion me doing this. And here is my markers. So one thing I like to do is to just make sure that the song aligns with on the grid. So you can see right here, just with the sound waves, that it all just aligns. Because a lot of these pop songs are going to be pretty straightforward and then it'll be very easy to do this. Basically what I'm doing is just double clicking on the marker and then typing in the section of the song. So for this, I can just do option drag and copy that there. And then we get to the chorus, so now I'm just gonna go here. Okay, if you wanna select multiple markers, you just hold down Shift Option and then click on the next one, and then you can hold down Option and then just copy it over like that. This is kind of going back to the pre-chorus. Okay, so then this is like a breakdown section. And this is kind of like another breakdown. I don't know, it doesn't really matter how you like call them as long as you know what you're talking about because you're the one using it. So I'm going to say breakdown two. And this is kind of like breakdown three. So this is it. This is with all the things, basically just adding all the markers, four bar each, and labeling them. And then once I've done that, color code everything. So the way to do that, you press option C. And I'm going to color the intro red. And then I kind of just like go through the rainbow. So pre-intro is red. Then the intro, to select more than one marker, you're going to hold down shift control and click. Now do option C. And these I'll make these pink. Then the verse, shift control to select more of these. Now option C to color code, we'll make the verse purple. Then the pre-chorus, and then there's some over here. And then I'm gonna do option C, and we'll make those blue. And then the chorus, oh, I could just actually leave this open actually. So just leave that. Shift control to select multiple, go through, and now I'll make those green. And now we have the multiple different breakdowns. So we have breakdown one, we'll make that orange. Breakdown two, which is just these two, we'll make that yellow. And then breakdown three, we'll make that this green. So each time I do it different, it's not like I have verse for the same color. I just kind of do it so I can just see. And it's really nice because whenever I get into the piano roll, like if I had a new software instrument track and I open up the piano by pressing P, go to the piano roll, you can see the markers here too. So that's really helpful when you have a lot of MIDI and a lot of stuff going on. And this is step one. 
Then what I'll do is I'll go through and listen to each section and write in the notes what happens where and what comes in. So this is before and this is after. So I'll just like listen. So there I go, for instance, like pre-intro, just a vocal. And for songwriting purposes, I'll just be like, just a vocal, one word, bumping that, two words over and over again, two words repeated. And then I go through and listen to each section and say, okay, so I hear for the intro, there's some vocal chops, there is a leading melody, there's like a synth bass. <laughs> There's um, an impact on beat one. You see what I mean? So I do that for all the whole song. And then I have that all here. And then when I'm ready to go, depending on how closely I want the exercise and how closely I want everything to be, I can just kind of hide this or delete it. So mute and then press control H to hide. And now I can just start building my own track with all the information using the reference track as a guide. Then you press H to undo it, hide it. There's a snare. It's a snare. I think it's like a clap. Clap beats two and four. And then the second half a vocal with a word comes in. And then the verse is pretty much all the same stuff. Just add more lyrics. That's pretty much how I set up my reference tracks in Logic. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you use markers. You take the time to set this up because this becomes basically like your roadmap or your blueprint for your song. Anyways, I really hope this was helpful. I will see you next week. The President's Day sale is still going on. If you want to take advantage of the Logic Pro Crash Course, where there's over 375 quick Logic Pro tips, I'll put the link in the description. Basically, you can click on any of the chapters in the table of contents. It'll take you to the chapter, and then you can click on the title, and it'll take you to the video explaining how you can do everything in each chapter. If you don't have an iPad, you can also access it from the desktop. So you can click on the section, it'll take you to the section, click on the title, and it'll take you right to the video where you can see everything, if it's not clear enough in the book. Also something that's really cool about having an ebook is that you can search for things. So if you do global tracks, it'll show you each key command. So I see G for global tracks, or here global tracks, option G, global tracks here for option G for global tracks configuration. So yeah, if the markers don't pop up, you press option G, and that's where they are. Just some of these other tricks here. Apostrophe to show markers. See? So apostrophe to hide markers, apostrophe to show markers. So pretty useful. I use this all the time because I don't memorize everything. So I built something that is meant to help me too. And this even works in the piano roll too. So look, apostrophe to show the markers. And then same thing, option G. Global Tracks configuration over here too. Anyways, I really hope this was helpful. Like I said, this is linked in my description for a discount. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Happy creating.